In the world of Avatar, there were humans who could bend the elements. Fire, air, water, and earth. They were extraordinary beings, superhuman to some. But there were those who were not blessed with such abilities. Non-benders, unremarkable, ordinary. But these non-benders were capable of holding their own alongside their bending brothers and sisters. The Equalist, Mei and Tai Li, Jet, Piandao, Sokka, and Asami. Initially only comic relief, by the end of the last Airbender series, Sokka became a competent warrior and strategist. As a child he had to grow up fast. His father was away fighting the Fire Nation, and his mother was killed in a raid, leaving Sokka as the eldest male of the Southern Water Tribe, its only protector. Sokka and his sister Katara would go on to discover the Avatar, the bender who would bring balance to the world. And together the trio journeyed the world, defeating the Fire Nation. Several generations later, in the newfound Republic City, Asami Sato was born to Hiroshi Sato of Future Industries, the pioneer of the Industrial Revolution. Intelligent, resourceful, and privileged, Asami grew into a well-developed young woman. She too found herself in the company of the Avatar, settling disputes in Republic City and Ba Sing Se. And though she was often the driver or pilot of the team, she could also go toe-to-toe -to -toe with their enemies. For this video, I will be observing Sokka at the time of the Rift comic books, shortly after the last Airbender series. For this matchup, we will be examining his use of his boomerang and club. I would use his meteor sword, but he lost it at the end of the TV series. For Asami, we will be observing her at the time of Legend of Korra, book 4. And for her weapon, we will be examining her use of her electrified glove. During the events of the Rift, Sokka was around the age of 17 at the very start of his prime, in a physical sense. When he trained and fought with Piandao, the Swordmaster made note of his superior speed and agility. Granted, this was in relation to Piandao himself, who was an old man, but these statements are validated by the many battles we've seen Sokka participate in. Though his ability was not as celebrated as someone as like Azula or Tai Li, he still managed to hold his own. By the end of the Legend of Korra series, Asami was 22 years old, and much of her fighting style was based around her dexterity. Whether fighting against Earth Kingdom bandits, Republic City Equalist, or Amon's lieutenant himself. Though her acrobatic abilities were not on par with someone like Tai Li, she was physically capable, somersaulting over motorcycles, or fighting on top of a moving train. So the thing to compare here is the two characters' training and their achievements. Much of Sokka's training came from experience, though for much of the series, he wasn't very helpful as a combatant, as Toph would point out. But he did receive bite-sized training from Suki, a Kyoshi warrior, and Piandao, the Fire Nation Swordmaster. Both would be valuable, teaching Sokka how to use his opponent's weight against them, much like Judo, and how to use a sword with more skill. For Asami, much of her training came by way of her father's paranoia. Growing up in the urban environment of Republic City, Hiroshi enrolled Asami into self-defense classes, which she seemed to excel in. And in an overall sense, her physical abilities exceeded what has been shown of us from Sokka, Sokka was more of a strategist than he was a master martial artist. His strength came more from his wordplay than his swordplay. That's not to say that he was incapable in a hand-to-hand -hand confrontation. He took on many Fire Nation soldiers, including those enhanced by Sozin's Comet. But I favor Asami's superior training, agility, and timing. Asami Sato gets the edge for her physical abilities. As stated before, we will be examining Sokka's use of his boomerang and his club, as depicted in the last Airbender graphic novels. With his weapons, he has long, mid, and close range covered rather well, whereas Asami only has close range covered with her electrified glove. However, it should be noted that Sokka's use of his boomerang and club weren't very successful against Tai Li, another fighter who was extremely agile. Also, Sokka's boomerang attack against Combustion Man was a bit of a fluke. Still, he does have an advantage at a distance. The other bit we should examine here is their close range weapons. Unlike his space sword, Sokka's club had less range, range that would be beneficial against Asami's electrified glove. Even so, metal is the perfect conduit of electricity, and if Asami were to block any of his strikes, he would still be shocked. 
That all said, when looking purely at their weapons, Sokka gets the advantage here. He has more options available to him at all ranges of combat, even if the use of his boomerang is in question and the advantage of his club isn't so great. Sokka gets the edge for his weaponry. When comparing each character's tactical abilities, we have to make a distinction between tactics and strategy. Tactics relating to moment-by-moment -moment decision making, and strategy relating to the overall design of a plan. Looking at Sokka, he was definitely noted more for his strategy than he was his tactics. As stated before, his biggest contribution to Team Avatar was his ability to devise plans and execute grand designs. That's not to say that he couldn't think on his feet. When Sokka fought Piandao, he used the environment to his advantage, throwing dust in the Swordmaster's eyes and cutting bamboo to obstruct his vision. Ultimately, Sokka lost the fight, but Piandao did complement his ability to think on his feet. When I first considered Asami, I saw her more as a tactician and less of a strategist. Throughout her fights, she was all about timing, waiting for the right moment to strike, much like an earthbender. When fighting the Equalist, for instance, she slipped and dodged until she found an opening. But there is another instance where she showcased her abilities as a strategist. When playing Pai Shou with Bolin, she was calculating, unlike Bolin who was steadfast. It's almost like the difference between a traditional chess player versus a speed chess player. Well, the aspects of strategy are all well and good, but they don't quite factor in into a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. If we were looking at this pair with two squads or armies at their command, it would be a bit different. So the main thing to examine here is their tactics. Sokka has definitely shown that he can use the environment to his advantage, something Asami has not displayed. But while this is true of Sokka, his tactics have never given him a significant advantage. It merely gave him a way to stay in the fight. It's hard to say how Asami would react to such tactics, as her fights are so few and far between, but she has displayed an ability to overcome and excel at countering offensives. That all said, I'm not comfortable giving the edge to either fighter. I feel this fight would not be decided on their tactics, but on their other abilities. Let's set up this fight. Let's say it takes place in the pro bidding arena. As a final tally, I would say the advantage to the victor goes 7 to 10. The following is a hypothetical explanation of these outcomes. First, let's look at the early fight. Let's say the pair stands 50 yards away from each other. I think it's fair to say that Sokka would attack first, using his boomerang as an advantage. But I find it more likely for Asami to dodge his boomerang than not. Still, Sokka does hold a fairly consistent advantage at a distance. Asami would have to close the distance between them to make anything happen. For this, I would give Sokka a 2-0 advantage in the early fight. If Asami can cope with Sokka's boomerang, then she can come within striking distance, but she would have to deal with Sokka's club. Considering her martial arts skill against Sokka's somewhat elementary swordsmanship, I favor her chances. When facing Zuko, Sokka could not muster a counter until he used unorthodox methods, and that's what would keep him in the fight with Asami. Though his pure martial arts skill might not match Asami and her electrified glove, he could use the environment, or his words, to throw her off. Still, I don't see this giving him a majority advantage. Ultimately, I would give Asami a 3-1 advantage in the mid-range fight. There's an outlier chance that Sokka could work something to his advantage, but not on a consistent basis. But if Sokka does manage to keep himself in the fight by way of distraction, he could force the fight into a more long-winded affair. Even so, I don't see him having much of an advantage. Not to mention, Asami applied strategy and tactics of her own through combat. That said, in the late fight, I see her taking a 4-0 advantage. Of all the scenarios, I see this fight ending in the mid-range battle, with Asami closing the distance and using her electrified glove to incapacitate Sokka, making Asami Sato the heir to future industries, the victor. Of course, this is all my educated guess based on the lore of the Avatar universe. Do you think Asami would win a majority? Or do you believe that Sokka is more likely the victor? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, peace, love, and remember, be water my friends. The question still stands. Who was the better Avatar? 
Do I like it? Do I not like it? Oh, I actually kind of like it. Oh my god, I like airbending a lot. It can be debated that Sora packed more punch than Aang. This is definitely the case at close range, though a little more murky at long range.